With the engagement of Prince Harry comes newfound interest in the royal family and the suspicious death of his mother, Princess Diana. Many believe her death was orchestrated, but what family secrets might Diana have learned? She had recorded evidence of serious sexual offenses which took place inside the royal household. Palace secret that could bring down the monarchy. And could it have ultimately led to her demise? Some claim the princess was killed because of a disturbing practice she had uncovered within the forbidden halls of Buckingham Palace. The royal family decided to stop Diana using that evidence, so they killed her. Her years inside the Windsor's private world of horrors had given Diana a glimpse into the shadowy Luciferian world we call the Illuminati. Was she preparing to use her international platform to expose the hidden workings of the elite? Diana knew the Windsors had a dark side, but researchers speculate she had become aware of something she could no longer keep silent about. According to the book The Biggest Secret by David Icke, Diana had sought advice from a trusted confidant concerning how best to reveal a secret that would shake the world. When asked if it concerned global drug trafficking, she replied, Oh no, it's much worse than that. The Sunday Express went further, however, and talked of a palace secret that could bring down the monarchy. The rape allegations were made to Princess Diana by a valet called George Smith, who said that he was raped by a servant of Prince Charles. However, it is believed that George Smith made other allegations of an even more serious nature, allegations of an even more serious nature, that the Queen intervened to stop those allegations coming out in court. Could Diana have discovered the extensive child trafficking network among the highest levels of power that is only now beginning to surface through scandals such as Jimmy Savile? Jimmy Savile was a creepy radio DJ and TV presenter who also happened to be best friends with Diana's husband, Prince Charles, even attempting to act as a mediator at one point in their troubled marriage. After his death, it was discovered that he had been England's most prolific sexual predator to date. His number of victims, both children and adult, reached into the thousands. He was into sick Aleister Crowley sex magic, including necrophilia, and grew powerful through his ability to procure children for the British aristocracy. Diana loathed the man. Jimmy Savile was not just a pedophile. He was a procurer of children for the rich and famous. He was, of course, an inner circle, a bosom buddy of the British royal family. And in all these uh, investigations and reports that have come out, there's been no mention of his connection to the royal family. But Savile wasn't the only child trafficker closely associated with the royals. In 2014, news broke of an entire pedophile ring operating within Buckingham Palace involving quote-unquote VIPs. A teenage boy working at Buckingham Palace revealed he was groomed and sexually abused by a VIP paedophile ring there. The lad was also assaulted at the royal family's Scottish retreat Balmoral. In a heartbreaking note, the boy, then just 16, told how he was the victim of exploitation of the highest order. Peter McKelvey, the former child protection officer who first raised the alarm about high-profile individuals engaged in child sex abuse, said that their campaign of abuse may have been going on for as long as 65 years, but there has always been the block and the cover-up and the collusion to prevent an investigation. There was also the case of the Queen's personal butler, Paul Kidd, who ran a high-level child trafficking ring inside Buckingham Palace and even brought children to meet the Queen Mother. It was first in 2008 that news about deep roots of paedophilia inside Buckingham Palace emerged. 
former Buckingham Palace butler was unmasked as a sexual predator who ran a paedophile ring while serving the royal family. American billionaire and convicted pedophile Jeffrey Epstein's former sex slave has named the Queen's son, Prince Andrew, as one of her abusers. It's a scandal in any shape. Prince Andrew, a member of the royal family, has been named in US legal documents, linking him to an abuse of a minor. The FBI allegedly has tapes of Epstein and his powerful friends having sex with underage slaves at his infamous Orgy Island. No longer the timid, naive teenager once lured into the Windsor's gilded cage, Diana had caught on to much more than anyone suspected. According to Mohammed Al-Fayed, Diana had recorded evidence of quote-unquote serious sexual offenses taking place within Buckingham Palace. The evidence was dynamite for the royal family. Diana, Prince of Wales, had kept record of all threats and bullying of Prince Philip. She had also recorded evidence of serious sexual offenses which took place inside the royal household. But deeper research reveals a much more sinister motive behind Savile's child abuse ring. Victims have come forward exposing the ritualistic nature of the abuses they endured at the hands of Savile and his rich and powerful friends. Satanism is known to be practiced among the British aristocracy. Could this be some of the earth-shattering information Diana wanted to expose? If so, she had become a dangerous woman indeed. But might even darker forces have played a role in the princess's untimely demise? Some researchers believe that the princess's death was ritual murder of the highest order. Proponents of this theory claim the princess was murdered according to an ancient pagan tradition and point to the alarming amount of occult symbolism surrounding her death. The Point Dalma Tunnel, where the princess died, was a sacred sacrificial ground to the Merovingians, the ancient Illuminati bloodline which founded Paris. During their rituals, the victim was sacrificed inside the underground temple. Diana was, after all, named for the moon goddess of ancient Rome, making the fact that she died inside an ancient sacrificial chamber to the moon goddess strikingly coincidental. The number 13 is known to have a great deal of significance within the realm of the occult, and is often found alongside the elite cabal's handiwork. Was it merely another coincidence then that the princess's car struck the 13th column? What were they really doing with her down in that tunnel for so long? We are told she bled to death, which is also in accordance with high satanic sacrifice. Why was Diana held in that tunnel for so long when she's supposed to have had internal bleeding, which needed um, repairing? Why not get her to hospital immediately? Why was she held in that tunnel for the best part of an hour and a half? Why? Because of, in the sick ritual, and that's what it was, the ritual of um, her uh, murder, she had to die in that place of ancient sacrifice to the goddess Diana. And it was when she died that they then moved her out. And of course, um, goodness knows what had happened to her internal organs, because this is what uh, these sick people use in their rituals. She proved to the world that a princess could be more than fairy tale weddings and diamond tiaras and displayed a kind of strength of spirit the rest of the royals could only envy. Diana was simply too good for them, and the whole world knew it. And so, she had to be done away with. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. For more info on Princess Diana's murder, see my full documentary, The Murder of Princess Diana. And as always, I want to give a special thanks to my patrons at patreon.com for believing in me and this channel. Thank you.